All right, do another video here. This is the iconic M1A. This is by uh, Springfield. I think uh, this is roughly around eighteen to two thousand dollars, depending where you get them. This is the loaded model, so slightly different um, upgrades, if you will. Um, obviously, this has a little more, a few more extra accessories on them. Um, it won't come with the bipod. It won't come with the scope mount. Obviously, this is a, a, a Nikon here, um, but I did get the walnut stock. So again, you're gonna pay a little extra for that, probably about two hundred dollars more than if you just get the uh, synthetic. Um, adds a little bit more weight, but but does does help with the weak recoil. Um, this here, this obviously is a uh, California muzzle brake here. We can't have the standard flash hiders that come with these. Um, in California, but I will say this does help with the recoil as well. It's a little bit loud with this gun um, So the loaded model comes with a heavyweight barrel um, It's obviously you can get it either blued or stainless when you when you when you get it This is stainless on this one. Obviously uh, you do get upgraded sights with the loaded model um, And you do get a two-stage uh, trigger um, With the loaded edition so we'll do a little safety check here. There's nothing in the magazine or the chamber here. Uh, this is a standard uh, 308. However, the uh, Springfields here, they can't shoot the 7 uh, 60 by 51. Uh, that trigger pull, I was going to show you, is a real nice, clean two stage. So you can, when you ready press, you feel the first kind of almost stop. Then you just go a slightly more on it, and it's a beautiful queen trigger pull. Um, I'm not too familiar with the standard triggers on these. I only know this one, and I will say it's very, very crisp. Um, definitely compared to like other other manufacturers out there. Now I do know too. This is, you know, Springfield. Some people don't like Springfield. I've, uh, I know there's other makes and models out there that make these. Um, I have to say though, I'm very, very happy with, uh, with this one. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it at all. It shoots uh, brass and steel. I really don't like shooting steel. And they even tell you too, uh, there's a little warning with these, uh, try not to shoot steel because of the, for the pressure of the, of, of the charging uh, handle here, charging bolt carrier. Uh, it can cause it to, um, um, on impact, while, while after it grabs the bullet and brings it into the chamber, the, stain, the steel casings will sometimes actually um, go off before it's actually chambered. So they do tell you in the actual owner's manual of these rifles, don't use uh, steel um, at all. Try to just use brass. And I, I think these here, if I'm correct, um, and obviously as most of you probably will know, uh, the, the military round 762 by 51 is actually a little cheaper than the 308 round and that's why I shoot out of this most of the time anyway it's just the uh, was at the 3 380 m ball or something like that I can't remember what they call it, but it's just a standard NATO round shoots great um, this is a Nikon scope with a uh, Sabak Industries uh, full steel M14 uh, mount on here a uh, little little pricey not gonna lie and then this scope was a little little high too it's not the top of the line but it's not a uh, cheap either um if i was gonna go for top of line we might go with like a uh a leopold uh but those are i do have one on my other 308 but that actually has less magnification than this one and is more expensive uh this one i think ran me around 500 on this uh nikon and I obviously have no problem with Nikon. Nikon's a very good quality brand. Um, I'm just, you know, if you're going for top notch, I would think that would be, you know, some of the higher end Leopolds. And obviously there's scopes in the thousand dollar ranges there that you could talk months about. Um, this is a made by Springfield Armory bipod. They do come, obviously you guys know if you can get bipods that um, you take off your front, your front um, sling mount here and you can attach a rail and then you just put a bipod there. That adds a lot of weight though. So this one actually attaches to the front gas block here of the uh, M1. 
Uh, and it's made by Springfield, so it's kind of designed for their guns. Uh, works really well. You know, it's funny. I read a lot of hate hate reviews on, on these mounts. So it made me kind of skeptical on getting it in the first place. But I finally got it. And I'll be honest, they're pricey. It's almost 200 bucks for this for this thing right here. Um, but I've had, it works flawless. I mean, you just uh, to run it, to hide it as you're moving, put it up. And then uh, to put it down, you just, it's all push pin. Pretty easy to, to push it up and down and everything else. Um, this is scoped in for, I think, 200 at zero. Um, I have really not been able to go out more than maybe three, 400 yards with this, um, with this setup. Um, obviously a 308 round, we all know can go easily. The Marines do it at a thousand yards. Very impressive. Very amazing. Um, I don't have a range like that, so I have never been able to do that. Um, but, uh, I've never had any problems with this, with this Springfield. Um, second second or third springfield firearm i bought but um really good the wood's really nice i mean i will say you know i use my guns a lot so they can get nicked sometimes They're not you know just how the wood is but um really good barrel i shot um i've done mag dumps out of this at times and the barrel has done wonders no problem there um trying to think so the, the one thing i didn't like though about this with it being um this type of setup is that with the scope on here obviously you're, you got almost that's almost three probably two inches two and a half inches that you got to get your face on and with this original stock here um you're you're almost putting your chin on it at least for me i got a small face so um, i did have to get this and that gives me you know just about the right clearance but that's almost a inch and a half um uh, pad on there just to try to make me level up a scope so that's something to think about when you do set these up like this obviously if you're just doing iron sights or whatever um you can just leave it as is another thing i do see a lot of boys do is uh you can actually get a rail system um i can't that goes over your gas block here over the main part of the barrel and they do a lot of um like um red dots on that that way they don't even put any rail here but it's all up in the center of the rifle and those actually, I've seen some of those, and those, they look a little weird to me, but I know they do work definitely for more close range, um, I don't know, 100, 200 yards, I feel like the red dot, you can't push out too far, but uh, that will keep the, the, the sight lower than this. Um, so I'm not sure if you even need this, unless if you're using a scope, at least for me, small face, I'm a small person, only 5'8". Um, trying to think, I mean, um, I haven't really had any problems with this at all. I've never had a jam at all um miss misfire uh never had any of those happen like i said they tell you in the war in the manual don't use uh steel i'll use brass um i think they did a great job on this gun i i really have no complaints about it and uh if you guys have any questions put them in the comments i will uh, have some live fire videos after this video thanks guys you got it Just low. Nice, you got it.